Now in this workbook, I want to calculate the total sales so I can eventually calculate the commissions to be paid out. First of all, I want to get the month totals first for January. And as you recall, Excel has a label for each cell. This one, C7, says so up in the name box and also under the orange C and the orange 7 as a cross-reference and C8. So with that in mind, if you remember your algebra days or early math, I'm going to type in the formula beginning with the equal sign, type in that first cell plus the second cell. And you can see it color coordinates it with that. Hit enter when you're done and it gives you the total. If you want to see the formula again, you go up in the formula bar, hence the formula bar, because we don't want to see the formula down here. We want to see the results of our formula. So in the spreadsheet, you get your face value or the front end, and then up here in the formula bar is the back end, what actually is happening behind the scenes. Now I can click up here and make some changes, or I can double click really fast. It brings up the color coordination again. Put my cursor somewhere, and then start deleting, making sure that I keep the formula simple. And you can see that C9 is now gone. I hit enter and it gives me a, a lesser number. I'm going to undo that. Let's go to the next example here. Now instead of typing in C7, what I'm going to do, still put up my equal sign. Instead of typing in for this example D, D7 because it's adjacent in a new column, I'm going to click. Automatically puts in D7 for me. I don't have to type it. Hit the plus sign now. I still have to add the plus. And then click plus, click, plus, click, enter. That's a little bit easier for me instead of typing in D7, D8, D9, D10. Now kicking it up another notch, what might be even faster than that, is I'm going to click in this cell here and I want to sum this up, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my formula as thus, equals SUM for sum, open parentheses, and then you can see that little pop-up, that little yellow here, what I'm going to do is instead of typing in the range which begins at E6 through E10, I'm going to click and drag. And you see that little colon there? That colon is the symbol for through. So it knows that instead of having plus signs, it needs to know that you're either adding, subtracting something. So the key word here is sum. So it knows that within these parentheses, it's going to sum the range beginning in E7. And again, the colon means through E10. I don't have to close my parentheses, the butler will come in and do it for me. In other words, I just hit enter and automatically fills it in. Now if I click on it, you can see up in the formula bar here, equals sum, the function basically to sum up this range, E7 through E10. You can click in the others and there's the plus. So we're getting a little bit quicker in our formulas and calculations. Now even better than that is I can delete both of these and all that work disappears. Not quite so. Remember the autofill video training exercise and how I mentioned that you can actually shorten your work when you have a formula by autofilling in the rest? For example, as long as I have the formula here, I can click and drag, make sure you hover over that little tiny black dot and you get your black cross. If I hold down the left mouse button, I click and drag, it's going to autofill all the way over and then I let go. And what it's doing is it's looking at a pattern here. In fact, these numbers look correct, don't they? For example, when I click in this box, I look up above, there's the D column, and I'm in the D column. Click in here, there's the E column, I'm in the E column. So what it's doing is, is that when I autofill, it's saying, okay, here's the formula we have here. Now, when I autofill to the next column, it says, shift everything, the formula, instead of the C's, let's make them D's because we're going to the next column. It'll also do the same thing for rows. It'll shift it from 7 down to 8. The autofill handle is that smart or logical. Now what about our average? What I'm going to do is, as you recall, to get the average, it's taking a number, dividing it by a range of numbers here. So I'm going to click in the month's average, and what I'm going to do is I want to get the average of all the employees' sales for January. So I'll hit equals on the keyboard again, and I can do one of two things. I can either click on the total here, and then divide it by 4 because that's how many employees we have. In fact, that would be the easiest, so there's C12. Now the symbol for division is the forward slash. There's my forward slash and then type in the number 4 because that's the total and we want to get an average of this total here which is based upon 4 employees and then hit enter and there's my average. So the average sale for January for the employees was 185. My low was 110. My worst employee I could say or they're having a bad month. My best is 220 but the average is 185. 
Now once you have it, you can do the same thing, autofill. Don't do all the work again by clicking in here, hitting the equals sign, and then also summing up the range. So I could do SUM, open parentheses, click and drag. Then I'll have to close it and divide that by 4, enter, and there's again the average for the month of February. Now instead of doing all that, I can click and drag the black autofill handle over and it gives me the averages for the rest of the months using the same formula. So if I click over here and it was a simple taking the total and dividing it by 4, I can click and drag that autofill handle. The same numbers are there, but when I click on it, the formula is updated with a different formula. Instead of the equal sum, I now have the equals just the month total and divided by 4. Now you'll notice I've clicked on this little smart tag. Whenever you start autofilling and copying and pasting, you'll get different smart tags. This one says, look, we're going to copy the cells. Do you just want to fill in the formatting only, or do you want to fill without the formatting? So you can, by default, leave it to copy cells, or you can fill without the formatting. And you can always click on this again if you haven't clicked off somewhere else. Maybe we just want to copy the cells. So filling the formatting is taking basically whatever formatting is on this cell. When I click and drag the autofill handle and saying, do I just want to fill it with or without? Because maybe I, if this was bold here, and then I click and drag, maybe I want to fill without the formatting so it's not bold. In any case, I'm going to undo that. The next thing I want to do is that I still want to get the totals here, at least for this range, for the four months, and I want to put them over here. An even faster way of getting our totals, instead of using the plus, 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 the equal sign, and also, looks like I overwrote it, but the equal sum, and then clicking and dragging. Better yet, I can click in the total, and then up on the toolbar, I have the auto sum. When I click on it, it gets the marching ants. Now, it doesn't know where to go. It's going to look above normally, but I want it to look over here and give me a quick sum of this range and I did it by clicking and dragging. When I click and drag wherever I go, that's where the marching ants are going to be. So I'm going to click and drag for this range, and you can see it's the same formula that we typed in, that we just went over, equals sum, and then hit enter. Looks terrific. Now if you see, any time you see these little green markers here, you click in the cell, you can hover over the little smart tag, it'll say, look, I bet you have errors, you're omitting adjacent cells, in other words, you're not including this blank cell it thinks that there's a problem. Basically, if you know you've done it right, you can ignore the little smart tag, but know that that little green guy is going to be sitting there. In fact, if you are a little bit annoyed with these little green dudes here, you can always go under the Tools menu, down to Options, click on the Error Checking, and you can uncheck this Enable Background Error Checking, because right now the color is set to that funny green that you see. So by unchecking that, you won't be able to see that anymore. It won't do the background checking, but I'll leave mine open here. A few more things you can do. This is the easiest to sum. It's really nice when you click on the sum here. You can click and drag. In fact, you can hold the control key down and select C7 through D7. Hold the control key and also just include F7 and not this right here and hit enter. But I'm going to undo that. Additionally, you can also, up on the formula toolbar, now I'm in H8. I can click on the FX and it brings up the functions. The one that we just typed in ourselves was the sum. We said equal sum and then we typed in uh, the range, which was maybe could be F7 colon F8, which is F7 through F8. Now, why am I showing you this when it's so simple and easy to click on the auto sum? Well, we got to start somewhere. In other words, you may in the future use more than just the sum function, which is really simplistic. You may use other functions, so we need to get the concept down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the sum function and click OK. It's going to pull up the arguments here. And what do I want to sum up? I can either type it in here. And right now, let's take a look at B8 through G8. So if you look over here, B8, well, it's including the employee ID all the way over to G8. That doesn't look right. So I can click in here and say I want go C, because you want to be in the C column right here, C8 and go over to F8, not include G8, we don't need that. So you can do it that way, or you see this little red arrow, that's the Collapse Dialog Box button. In other words, when you click on it, it collapses. 
Now the reason why it collapses is because then it allows you to click and drag and select the range. And to me that's a lot easier than typing it in. But keep in mind that when you click and drag, if you already have something in here, it's going to add to it. So it looks like a mess, this formula. Delete it in here. And then I'll come over here and you can see that there's my formula equals sum. I'll click and drag. And that looks nice right there. Now, when I'm finished, I can do one of two things. I can either click on this pop open box to bring it back up, which is fine. Pop open. There we go. I'll close it again. And then I can delete this and select my range. Or the easiest thing is hitting enter on the keyboard and automatically pops open. And then hit enter again because as you're well, if you've seen the other video trainers, anytime you see a blue halo in, in Microsoft 2003, that means that it allows you to hit enter without clicking on the OK. If it was highlighted around the cancel, if I hit enter, it would cancel it. So all I have to do is hit enter, boom, it automatically adds it right here. And that was the function. Now, we could have typed this in. I mean, if you're really good and, and you remember the formulas, all you have to do is type in equals. But the reason why they have the FX here for the function button is because it has variables, um, a lot more than just the sum if you're using other functions. And we'll cover those a little bit later on. And that little pop-up box gives us the opportunity to type in those variables, divide it by this cell, and then put this cell in. In any case, we'll cover that later. You also might find it easy, besides auto-filling the rest here, which we won't do, is that if you're using the same formula, you can actually select it, copy it, and then I'm going to right click in that cell because the moment I right click it brings up the menu and paste it and automatically paste that formula. I'm going to hit the escape to get rid of those marching ants. And is it the same? Is it actually, I'm checking the formula up here, is it doing the next row? I mean this row is for row 9. Excellent. So it is doing it for the next row. So it's doing it row by row when I copy and paste or when I autofill it's going to do column by column. And the same thing if I autofill here, obviously, if I click and drag, it's still going to update, and it's now going to be in row 10. Now, to get the quick average here, I can click over in this cell, and I can still use the auto sum, but I want to use the auto sum with the drop-down arrow here, because if I click on this, it's automatically going to sum up, not give me the average. So clicking on the drop-down arrow, I select average, and then all I have to do is select the range by clicking and dragging, again, only using my white cross here. So you can see there's the uh, formula, the function equals average of C7 through F7, hit enter. And then again, to cover over the function, can't emphasize this enough because if you're going to move into the advanced levels in Excel 2 and 3, you want to get this down. Click on the FX, make sure you're in the correct cell, FX. And then down below, this is um, the most recently used functions. I mean, very nice, there's only a few. If you don't see it here, you can click on the drop-down arrow and select all functions and it's alphabetized, in which case you'll have to scroll down through the A's, B's, C's. But for right now, the most recently used is the easiest. Select average, click OK. And then it says, well, you've got number one and number two. Uh, basically, I want to average and use this uh, argument here, or this number one, by typing in the range, which could be row eight, and I want to start C8 through F8. So I can type it in here. C8 colon F8. And you'll notice the moment I type it in over to the right hand side, it's pulling in those cells. 200.75, there's 200.75. And then it's giving me the immediate average. So whenever you're using functions, right off the bat you can tell if it's working for you when you finish typing in your argument, if you get an immediate answer here. In fact, you can look up in the formula bar and it's got the same thing average. All you have to do is click OK. Remember, if I delete this, you want to make sure you delete it. Make sure there's nothing in there if you use the collapse dialog box button by clicking on it. And then go ahead and click and drag. Hit enter, hit enter, that fast. And then click and drag using the black autofill handle to autofill in the rest of these with the same formula. So it shifts to row 9. Click on here, it shifts to row 10 quick note here, if you double click in one of these formulas, double click really fast, it lassos that range. You can click and drag those little dots to include less or more of the formula and then hit enter. I'm going to undo that. Finally, what I'd like to do is I want to find out for the month of January what the highest number was and what the lowest number is. Now, yeah, I can eyeball it, very simple, but what if I had 
like rows upon rows, like a hundred rows. I don't want to eyeball that, that's too much. So they do have functions for this. They have a maximum function for your highest and a minimum for your lowest, or you could call it over here max and min. So that way it's easy to remember when you're selecting your functions. You can use the auto sum, that's fine. Again, make sure you're in the cell, and then go up on the toolbar, click on the drop down arrow, select max, and then select the range of cells that you want to find out what the highest number is. Now by eyeballing it, we can say it's we can see that it's 220. So click and drag to include it and then hit enter and it says the maximum or the highest sale was 220. Also we can use the function. And again I want you to get familiar with this if you go to higher levels. If not, I guess you can click and drag and go over this video really fast. So in the min, I'm going to click on the FX. And if it's not listed here as the most recently used, I can click on the drop down arrow, select all, and then scroll down to the M's. And there's my min. Click OK. Pulls up. I can do my argument here. Type it in, or it's easier for me, click the collapse dialog box. Now, if I do it now, it's going to have C15 in there. And then click and drag, and it's C7 through C10. Hit enter, enter. What's the lowest number? It was 110. And then simply do your auto fills because make sure I get that black cross and click and drag. Select it, black cross, click and drag. Perfect. Now I can find out who I'm going to fire. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, as soon as I upload a new video, you'll be notified instantly. And you can do that by coming over here and clicking on my face. You can also click here to support me, so for $2 a month, you can have access to over 2,700 training videos, all ad-free, and for a few bucks more, you can have access to my exercises, instructor notes, quizzes, certificate of completion, and a whole lot more.